All right, now we're going to talk about series. And all a series is basically is, again, you have a sequence. So one, two, three, four, five. But now instead of just looking at the sequence, we're going to start adding up these numbers. Okay, so this would be an example of a series. Maybe I also have another series. So these were actually my examples in the other video. And again, I start adding these up. Okay, so you're adding up infinitely many terms. And certainly in this first example, if you add up 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6, etc., this is going to end up just going off to infinity. And at first, your intuition kind of says, you know, if I'm adding up infinitely many things, it seems like it should go off to infinity. But if the things are getting small enough, fast enough, let me put an extra term in here. Let me make point 0.1 in there as well. If, you're, if the, the things that you're adding up are getting small enough, fast enough, maybe it will, in fact, not go off to infinity. So notice if I take 1 plus point 0.1, I'll get 1.1. If I add on 0.01, I'll get another 1, plus 0.001, I'll get another 1, another 1, etc. So in, in that case, we can claim that this series will converge to 1.1 repeating. Okay, So that's the basic idea. We're going to add up a bunch of terms, infinitely many in fact, and ask ourselves, does it converge or diverge? In this particular example, I was able to address exactly what it converged to. And in this case, it converged to 1.1 repeating. In general, with a sequence or series, this is going to be a hard question to answer. Typically, you can only say, yes, it converges, no, it diverges. And there's going to be a bunch of different ways to justify that. And that's kind of the hard thing with series. Um, just like integration, if you change the problem around a little bit, you may have to use a totally different integration technique. The same thing applies to series. If the form of the series is just a little bit different, you're going to have to do some very different things to show it converges or diverges. One of the few types of series that you can answer, yes, it converges, no, it diverges, is an example just like I have here. And notice I could rewrite this as 1, and then I have 1. And what am I multiplying it by? Well, I'm multiplying it by 1 tenth. If I multiply 1 by 1 tenth, I get 0.1. Notice then the next number, 0 0.01, that's being multiplied by 1 over 10 squared plus 1 times 1 over 10 cubed and then this is going to this pattern is going to keep continuing i'll have 1 times 1 over 10 to the 4th plus 1 times 1 over 10 to the 5th and this type of series when you keep multiplying notice i'm just multiplying the term before it by 1 10th so i multiplied the term before it by 1 10th to get to the next term i'm just multiplying this one by 1 10th when you keep multiplying a term by the same number to get the next term multiply it by the same number to get the next term. This is what's known as a geometric series. And a geometric series is one of the few types of series where you can answer yes it converges, no it diverges. If it does converge you can actually say it converges to this particular value. And in general with series they're going to write them much more compactly. You're not going to see all the terms. So notice I can rewrite this series using a summation. I've got 1 times 1 over 10, and I'm raising it to the, in this case, n minus 1 power. If I start my series, <clears throat> excuse me, my summation at 1, and it goes off to infinity. So notice if you plug 1 in, I will get my first term here. If I plug 2 in, I'll get my next term. If I plug 3 in, I'll get my next term etc etc and for a geometric series 
this number that's being raised to a power is what's called the common ratio. So in this case, one-tenth is my common ratio. And the result for a geometric series basically says, and they'll sometimes ab abbreviate the common ratio as R, a geometric series will converge if this common ratio if the absolute value of that number is between, well, excuse me, if the absolute value of it is less than 1. So another way of writing that, it says the number that's being raised to the power should be between positive 1 and negative 1. If that ratio is anything else, you can conclude that this geometric series diverges and it's either just going to go off to positive infinity, negative infinity. It could also kind of keep bouncing around. Um, so it's not like it has to go to infinity or negative infinity. Um, you know, you could have negative 1 plus 1, negative 1 plus 1, negative 1 plus 1. That's just going to be kind of oscillating between 0 and 1. It's not getting close to one specific number. It's bouncing back and forth. So that would be another example of a divergent series. For a geometric series, okay, again, this is one of the few, th few types where you can answer if they converge or diverge. For a geometric series, it says that if you know that you have a convergent geometric series, as we do in this case, it says they're going to converge, and sometimes you'll see it written as a over 1 minus r, and A is considered to be the first term. So in this case, this is my A value. But this little formula only works when your geometric series starts at n minus 1. So it can be a little confusing. The way I like to think about it is it converges to another way is you can write it as it's the first term of your series divided by 1 minus this common ratio. And I'm going to do a couple examples of these um, on another video, so definitely take a look at this, because this is something I know that confuses people. It certainly did confuse me at one point. Um, so in this case, again, if I just use this formula, I recognize, you know, the question could be, does this series converge or diverge? And I would say, oh, well, I've got a number raised to a variable power. This is one of those geometric series. The number inside that's being raised to the power is smaller than 1. It's between negative 1 and 1. So yes, it does converge. What's it going to converge to? Well, it's going to converge to 1 over 1 minus my common ratio. Again, my common ratio is 1 tenth. Well, this is 1 over if you think about 1 as being 10 over 10, I'll get 9 tenths, and that's the same thing as 10 ninths. And if you put 10 ninths into a calculator, you're going to get out the number 1.1 repeating. So it does kind of agree with what we did up here, and this is a very useful little result. So. There's a few other series they usually talk about that you can talk about whether it converges or diverges. One of those is a telescoping series. Um, I probably won't have an example of those um, on one of my videos. You see them rarely. Um, maybe I'll slide one in there at one point, but definitely a geometric series is, is one of the most important. So feel free to look at for a video close to this one, and I'm going to do some examples of some geometric series and just some other series in general showing whether they converge or diverge. Uh, one other thing I do want to point out um, that's very useful before I end this one. Notice if I look at my terms in this original series, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, I could write my a shorthand formula for this as being a sub n simply equals n. If n is 1, I'll get 1. If n is 2, I'll get 2. If n is 3, I'll get 3. There's a nice way to tell whether a sequence or ser excuse me a series is going to diverge. This is, so this is for a series. It says if you look at the limit as n goes to infinity, 
it says if those terms do not equal zero, then the series itself diverges. So the series diverges. And intuitively, what's happening is if the limit's not becoming zero, it means the things that you're adding up aren't getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Well, if they stop getting smaller and smaller and smaller, they stop at some particular value, maybe it's one half. Well, if the smallest they get is positive one half, you're still adding up infinitely many one halves, one half plus one half plus one half plus one half. Well, if you've got infinitely many of them, it's going to go off to infinity and that series is going to diverge. This is a very, 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 very useful result. You're almost going to want to get in the habit of any series you have, they're going to ask you, okay, does it converge or diverge? This is going to want to be almost the very first question that you ask yourself is, does that limit equal zero or not? If not, it diverges, boom, you're done, and it, the problem's a lot easier. Um, the, the, the trap that people run into, and this is the one you have to be careful about, if the limit as n goes to infinity of your terms does equal zero, it may converge or it may still diverge. Okay, so don't think the opposite is true. If the limit doesn't equal zero, oh great, it diverges. That's absolutely true. If the limit does equal zero, don't automatically conclude it converges. It could still do either one. So this test here is sometimes known as the test for divergence. So definitely keep this in your bag of tricks. Um, some of these tricks, some of these problems can be pretty, pretty tedious to justify whether they converge or diverge. If you remember this test for divergence, a lot of times it'll be a quick bailout and um, it'll knock problems out. So if you've forgotten limits as well in general, I do have some videos over some basic limits. You may want to refresh yourself on those because you're going to be doing a ton of limits when you do sequences and series problems.